on today's show. The Rivian R1T and R1S launch at the LA Auto Show, Jaguar's iPace EV, Aces Euro and Cap crash tests, and how a Tesla power bank saved one Australian company millions of dollars in a single year. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, folks. It's good to be back in the studio after nearly two weeks away, and there's been quite a lot of news built up while I've been doing other things. So let's get going. Our first story comes from the LA Auto Show, where automotive startup Rivian, which has been in stealth mode for the past nine years, unveiled its R1T electric pickup and R1S electric SUV. Based on the same quad motor, all-wheel drive skateboard and chassis, and offered with a choice of battery packs ranging from 105 kilowatt hours to 180 kilowatt hours, the R1T and R1S are aimed primarily at outdoorsy adventure types and as such are a little more Range Rover than Land Rover in their interior design. Performance is crazy too, we're talking Tesla quick, so I can't wait to see if this company makes good on its promises. Talking of Tesla, the mid-range Model 3 got its official EPA rating this week, achieving a range of 260 miles, that's 418 kilometers per charge, from its approximately 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. In the city, that translates to 128 mpg. On the highway, that's 117 mpge. And combined, it's 123 mpge. And that's less efficient than the original rear-wheel drive long-range Model 3, but it's still pretty impressive. And it's also better in terms of range than the Chevy Bolt EV or Hyundai Kona Electric. Automotive startup Byton has spent most of 2018 displaying its crazy tech-filled M-Byte and K-Byte luxury EVs, you know, with those steering wheel mounted screens. But it's finally announced it intends to start series production of its M-Byte SUV in China next year. According to the company, the M-Byte production launch will happen in April, with Chinese customer deliveries due in the second half of next year. China has always been the intended launch market for this firm, but there's no details on when the vehicles will be launched elsewhere. I'll keep you posted if that changes. As promised, Audi unveiled its e-tron GT concept car at the LA Auto Show last week, and boy is it a good looking thing. With a size and body styling similar to the Audi RS7, the e-tron GT concept is a four-door, four-seat Grand Tourer based on the same J1 platform as the Porsche Taycan. When it enters production around 2020, which Audi is already committed to, we should expect a 3.5 second sprint time, 590 horsepower from its all-wheel drivetrain, and next-generation high-power DC quick charging which should add around 80% of range in less than 20 minutes. But until it's launch, you're just going to have to sit and drool and start saving. The Jaguar I-Pace may have been on sale for a while, but this week, Euro NCAP, one of the world's leading crash test authorities, officially published its five-star rating for Jaguar's first all-electric model. It offered praise for how the I-Pace demonstrated that, quote, future vehicles will be good for the environment, but also provide high levels of safety. Less impressive, however, is the Jeep Wrangler, whose one-star test ratings were released at the same time as the iPaces results. Criticised for its lack of driver assistance features, it really was a case of the dinosaur being in this particular bunch. Kia used the LA Auto Show last week to give its US debut of the Kia Nero EV, or e-Nero as it's known in some markets, as well as hold the global debut of the next generation Kia Soul EV. While some had expected the millennial targeted CUV would come with a small 39 kilowatt hour battery pack as offered as a lower cost option on the Hyundai Kona Electric, which also shares the same drivetrain as the Nero and Soul EVs, Kia surprised everyone by announcing the Soul EV would come with a 64 kilowatt hour battery capacity. Range and pricing haven't yet been announced, but I will share them when they have. Nissan was in LA too, and while it had planned to launch its longer range Leaf E+, it pushed the launch back to CES 2019, using the arrest of its CEO Carlos Ghosn by way of explanation. And this week, we learned that Nissan has also decided to not use liquid cooling on that longer range, higher capacity Leaf E+. Instead, it's going to use an active, air-conditioned, air-cooled battery setup. It's the same system found in the Nissan ENV200 minivan, and while it is better than passive air cooling as found on other LEAF models, there are some serious doubts over how effective it'll be. Nissan, you may have just made another poor decision. Faraday Future continued its slow and painful death this past week, 
furloughing more of its staff and laying off others. Issuing a statement on Twitter of all places, Faraday Future took pains to lay the blame squarely at the feet of its investor, Evergrande Health, which it says is refusing to make scheduled payments. The company says it expects a ruling on ongoing arbitration with said investor in a few months and then promises to solve its liquidity problems in a similar time frame. Honestly, though, I don't think I can believe it. As I'm sure you know, the original Boring Company Tunnel launch event got postponed earlier this year. I'm guessing the reason might have been because the Boring Company decided to give up plans to build the tunnel under certain parts of LA after local residents protested in certain neighbourhoods. However, the launch is now back on with a December 18th date, and this time Elon Musk is promising us, quote, more than a tunnel opening with modded but fully road legal autonomous transport cars and ground to tunnel car elevators. Sounds exciting. Anyone got an invite? The Hornsdale Power Reserve, a 100 and 29 megawatt hour Tesla power bank installation in South Australia, has now been in operation for more than a year. And in that time, says developer Neon, it has helped save big bucks, avoiding the need for network upgrades and additional generation capacity. It's responded effectively to peak demands on the local network, supplementing power when needed, and has saved the company a total of 40 million in grid costs. And because it's connected to wind turbines, well, it's also helped provide lots of renewable electricity to homes and businesses in the area. It's official. After years of testing, you can now hail a Waymo One fully autonomous driverless taxi. At least you can in Arizona, where the service went live this week. Operating 24-7, you hail a Waymo One through Waymo's dedicated smartphone app, although for now, it still is limiting participant numbers to Waymo Early Rider Program members. Price is pretty competitive too, with a 15-minute ride costing 7 bucks. Welcome to the future where our robot overlords do everything for us and hopefully they don't have body odour problems like ye olde cab drivers. And finally, autonomous vehicle and semi-autonomous vehicle technology is getting pretty advanced and I'm guessing that if you have a Tesla with autopilot enabled, the temptation to let your car take the strain is sometimes a little too much. Just don't be like one California man who had his car boxed in and slowed down by the California Highway Patrol this week on the freeway after he fell asleep drunk at the wheel. Thanks to Tesla's autopilot, he survived because falling asleep at the wheel is usually a fatal thing. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you have an autopilot, you have to stay alert and ready to act. End of lecture. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, well, you know where to send it. In the meantime, I hope that you had a great weekend, that your next week is a good one. And I'll see you in this time next week for another Ecotech Roundup show. You can find out when we upload new Ecotech goodness by just hitting the bell below. And while you're at it, don't forget to switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Go on, do your bit and help keep emissions as low as possible by getting your electricity free of nasty greenhouse gases. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.